Looks like the killer we're chasing just cut a path right to the Mississippi. Edna wants to know if we're going to stop and help these people. Huh. To be honest, I thought we were going to be the ones dishing out all this pain on the Luddites. So close. Yeah, okay. Let's see if the wounded will accept help from us infidels and our factory-made stim packs. You are a good human. A good, good human. Uh-huh. That's the last of the stim packs. Can't believe we're wasting our meds on the enemy. Have we forgotten the time they threatened to kill me? When we're back on the road, we'll scrounge for more. We've lost a whole day here, and the android's going to be halfway to the... Capital Wasteland. I know the place it's probably heading. You know, after the Chosen One found the Garden of Eden creation kit, they returned to Arroyo to find a scene a lot like this. The village shaman had a few final breaths to explain what had happened, even though he didn't have words for it. Giant dragonflies that spat fire, men in metal suits. Arroyo's warriors fought them, as well as spears and gecko hide could fight against plasma rifles and power armor. The Enclave loaded the remaining villagers into vertebrates and flew south along California's coast. Few people knew that the Enclave even existed then, and even fewer knew the locations of their bases. After a long drive down the coast from Oregon, the Chosen One discovered a gas station at a place once called Navarro. It was a dead end. Seemed like a dead end? That was the Enclave's main refueling station for their vertibirds. Yes, it was. The Enclave left one guard in a silly robe at the station. The actual base was hidden deep in the woods in an old Poseidon oil refinery, and most of it was underground. The guard's job was to chase away tribal looky-loos and send anyone who seemed too curious down south on a wild goose chase. Chosen one got fooled by the ruse, if I recall. Went on south down to Frisco. San Francisco was one of the more enlightened cities in the wasteland. It had several organizations that were technologically advanced and knew of the Enclave's existence already, though none of them could challenge it. The Hubologists ran their operation out of the Golden Gate, but they were more concerned about building a spaceship than with fighting earthly enemies like the Enclave. Spaceship? You gonna go on about aliens again? Now that's a story for another day, but the Hubologists believed in a different kind of alien. Made up ones from some pre-war science fiction writer who decided to create his own religion. Still plenty of cults in the wasteland. Cults can be encountered all over the wasteland, and before the war, things weren't that different. Dick Hubble made a living writing novels, and he figured that if you wanted to make real money, you gotta start a religion. Came up with some racket about using gadgets to realign neurodynes and help enlightened people become the spokes in the great wheel of life. Of course, he was the fat spider at the heart of the web, the hub, an axis of the wheel where all the money flowed. Religions from the back when times had a hard time after the war, but Hubology stuck it out for a good 160 years. They still used the same marketing techniques that worked on pre-war society with a helping of abduction and brainwashing. When the Chosen One visited the Hubology compound in San Francisco, there were a couple of adult Holovid stars from New Reno there, shaking hands and using their celebrity status to lure in lost souls from the wasteland. I remember hearing people talk about Hubology when I was a kid. They had a brainwashing center in NCR back then, but I haven't heard much about them since the days of the Chosen One. They get their spaceship working and take off for planet Spacetopia? They called it the USS Quetzal after their travel destination, but I always suspected the Hubologists met some unfortunate end. Chosen One probably murdered them all. The main power in San Francisco and enemies of the Hubologists were the Xi. In the back when times before the Great War, China sent their submarines to snoop around off the shores of America's coast. One submarine, the Shi Huang Ti, was patrolling the Pacific when the war began. 
even out at sea, the devastation was great enough to damage the sub and set it adrift. It eventually washed ashore near San Francisco, and the crew used the salvaged equipment to build a base of operations. Over the generations, they maintained their exotic eastern traditions and technological aptitude. One of the strangest was a peculiar form of unarmed combat handed down from master to student over the decades. When the Chosen One showed up in Chinatown, they had already earned a reputation as a prize fighter in New Reno. In Chinatown, this mastery of the sweet science was further refined by the local school of martial arts. The Chosen One used these skills to resolve a dispute between two factions of the Shi by challenging one of their masters in honorable combat. The Brotherhood of Steel had a small outpost there too, staffed by a brother named Matthew. He heard of the Chosen One's exploits and knew to look out for them. Matt was willing to take a chance on an outsider and asked the Chosen One to infiltrate the Navarro and steal the Enclave schematics for vertebrates. Everyone in San Francisco wanted those schematics. The Shi were intent on rebuilding civilization and needed aerial transportation. The Hobologists thought the plans would help them complete their spaceship or something, and the Brotherhood needed to counter the Enclave's tactical advantage. But that story we'll have to wait for another day.